Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I have been a cardiologist for more than 30 years. Today we are going to talk about long QT syndrome. Long QT syndrome. The objectives of this presentation include what is long QT syndrome? What is the etiology of long QT syndrome? What is the clinical presentation like? How do we diagnose long QT syndrome and finally how do we manage patients with long QT syndrome? Before we jump into long QT syndrome, let us understand some of the electrical challenges that happen during an action potential in a myocardial cell. The resting myocardial membrane potential is approximately minus 80 to 90 millivolts. When an electrical impulse comes through the myocardial cell from a Purkinje fiber, it excites, it activates, it activates the sodium influx which results in phase 0 of the action potential. That is followed by a rebound due to potassium movement uh, which is represented by phase 1. And the calcium influx, the calcium influx uh, maintains the phase 2 of the action potential. This is uh, followed by a potassium efflux from the cells uh, resulting in phase 3 or the repolarization of the action potential. When a surface electrocardiogram is uh, superimposed on a timeline of uh, an action potential, here is how it looks. We have the QRS complex which corresponds to the phase 0 and 1 of the action potential, whereas the ST and T correspond to phase 1, 2 and 3 of the action potential. The QT interval is measured from the beginning of the Q wave to the termination of the T wave. And this is usually corrected to the heart rate by using a formula. The corrected QT interval is measured by a formula where the QT interval is divided by the square root of the R or interval. The upper limit of a corrected QT interval is 0 0.44 seconds. However, it is considered normal in men if the corrected QT interval is approximately 0 0.46 and in women 0 0.47 seconds plus or minus 15 percent. However, if the QT interval is significantly prolonged, it would be clearly evident on the surface electrocardiogram. Here is an example showing a normal QT interval of 0 0.44 seconds and here is a clear cut uh, demonstration of a prolonged QT interval with a QTC of 0 0.63. This is definitely a case of a prolonged QT syndrome. If you look at the action potential, the agents that increase the refractory phase of the action potential or the phase 3 of the action potential are the ones which predispose to the signs and symptoms of long QT syndrome. What is the etiology of long QT syndrome? There are two main etiologies. The first one is congenital. It is a familial disorder associated with neurosensory deafness. The acquired ones are mostly related to antiarrhythmic drugs as a matter of fact which prolong the refractory period or phase 3 of the action potential namely class 1 drugs which include quinidine, procainamide and disopyramide and class 3 drugs which, which prolong the refractory period such as sotalol and dofetilide. Antipsychotic drugs such as tricyclic antidepressants have also been shown to prolong the refractory period and thus increase the QT interval. Other causes include hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, protein diets and sudden infant cardiac death. 
What is the clinical presentation like in those patients who have either idiopathic or acquired long QT syndrome? These patients may present with uh, ventricular arrhythmias, palpitation. They may also present with uh, torsoid. Ventricular fibrillation is uh, usually a little complication. Sometimes these patients are mistaken to have seizures, especially in the congenital group. And in sudden death and syncope may be some of the other symptoms uh, frequently associated with uh, patients with uh, long QT syndrome. The QT prolongation can also be brought out by excess uh, stress or adrenergic stimulation which can precipitate ventricular arrhythmias. How do we diagnose long QT syndrome? Of course, we are going to use an electrocardiogram to diagnose the QTC interval and thus make a diagnosis of uh, long QT syndrome. If there is evidence of long QT syndrome in a given patient, all the other family members must have an electrocardiogram to see if they have asymptomatic uh, long QT intervals. The QT interval prolongation can also be brought out by stress or any type of uh, physical, emotional, audi auditory and psychological stimuli which can not only prolong the QT interval but may also precipitate ventricular arrhythmias, ventricular tachycardia or even fibrillation. How do we manage these patients with prolonged QT interval? In idiopathic patients who are asymptomatic, we just need to observe them. We need to closely monitor them or maybe get a halter to see if they are having asymptomatic arrhythmias. However, in those patients who have symptoms like palpitation, ventricular ectopic rhythm or ventricular tachycardia or those who have history of syncope, they must be treated with maximum doses of beta blockers. In our presentation on antiarrhythmic drugs, we talked a lot about action potential and uh, the drugs that alter the various phases of the action potential. So I would suggest you go and watch our video on uh, antiarrhythmic drugs which gives a much better understanding of how each class of drug works. Class 1b drugs shorten the QT interval. Thus, by shortening the QT interval, hopefully they may improve the electrical stability of the action potential and the myocardium and thus hopefully prevent uh, significant uh, ventricular arrhythmias. The drugs in this category are mixilitine and tokenide. If these patients are having significant ventricular arrhythmias and they have history of syncope, we could consider cervicothoracic sympathetic ganglionectomy and of course correction of electrolyte imbalances might help to minimize these ventricular arrhythmias and syncope. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of uh, long QT syndrome, the etiology, diagnosis and management. Thank you so much for your attention and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you so much. I am Dr. Nick Nickam and we will see you next time. Thank you.